What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty is yet another request from you guys. And we are again returning to the basics here in the studio. We're going to talk about some of the dynamics you're going to experience when you get in an excavator for the first time. It does occur to me <laughs> in all of my videos, I have not talked about the way weight distribution works in an excavator because let's face it, when you do this for a living, it's some of the basics are the things you forget to explain. So let's flip over to the top down view and we're going to take our little Cabelco SK500 here and demonstrate some of the concepts you're going to experience when you run an excavator. So everyone's familiar that this thing picks up a lot of dirt, it spins it around, and it throws the dirt. Now, this thing in theory, when you first get into it, is super stable and you don't have to worry about it bucking and pitching or doing anything. And very quickly, you're shocked when that is not the case. You actually do have to think about weight distribution. The way an excavator works is basically like a giant teeter-totter. So we're gonna raise our boom up. We have a counterweight back here. It's the heaviest part of the machine, uh, single piece, I should say. And then in addition, uh, we have our final drives back here, which also add a fair amount of weight to the back of the machine. That is your counterweight. Then on the other side of the teeter-totter, you have your arm with your bucket with whatever load you put into it. The whole concept of this machine is in theory, if you're handling the exact right amount of material, this track base will stay totally flat because the amount of weight extended at full reach out here in the bucket is offset by this counterweight. And so we can move this around and we can dump our load and we're nice and stable. Now, everyone in the earth moving industry knows you don't ever shake the bucket around and make it nice and level and try to get just the right amount of weight. No, we're in this to move some dirt, so we're humping it. We're going to load this baby up. In fact, half the time we're going to have an oversized bucket on this machine because we're wanting to move as much material as possible, which means all of a sudden our teeter-totter starts getting out of whack and we start pitching. Well, how do we deal with that? Well, first of all, there are some key concepts. Think about a teeter-totter when you were a kid. If I've got the weight extended way out here, I'm going to be much more prone to tipping. But if I can get that weight a little closer, if I can boom up, boom up and stick in and get that weight closer, maybe out here at full reach, I was really tippy. But once I get to about here, all of a sudden, I'm not tippy. Now I've got a lot more control. So one of the first key concepts you're going to learn in an excavator is when you're dealing with heavy loads at full reach, the goal should be to get those loads in tight to the machine as quick as possible so that you have control and you're not losing your stability in the machine. This is really important as a rookie operator. As you get more and more experienced, you're going to get used to the machine moving on you and you're going to have a really good feel for when you're going to tip and just how much you can get away with. But in the beginning, a key concept is just bring that load a little closer to you and that's going to take the tippiness out of it. Now, another concept we need to think about is sometimes you're going to have a situation where you've got to boom out to full reach in order to throw the dirt away from you. How do you do that if you're going to tip? Well, if you think about if I were holding a bowling ball in my arm and I had my arm extended way out here, that is a tremendous amount of weight for me to hold at full reach. But as I go out with my reach, if I'm dropping the ball controlled, but I'm letting the ball down at the same time, my arm isn't technically carrying all that weight because some of the weight is being taken by gravity as I let my arm fall. We're going to use that same concept in an excavator. So we may start here with our super heaped, super heavy bucket of material. And as we spin, we're going to stick out. Now, we're before we get to the point where we're sticking out, there's a key concept. We're going to boom up a little bit. We're going to give ourselves a little bit of room because when we go over our swing area, as we start to stick out, you're going to start to feel the ass end of your machine, start to get light and lift up. If you start to boom down, don't drop it, but slowly control boom down. Now all of a sudden this isn't as heavy as it was because we're letting gravity take some of that weight for us. And so now I can reach out there at full length and just about the time that I run out of boom, boom down, I can dump that load off and I've stayed pretty dang stable. 
Now there's a reason I wanted to demonstrate this with die cast because if I was out there just slamming myself around in an excavator, it's not very good for the equipment. And I can do this in a very controlled way. In real time, this happens much quicker. I'll try to show a video clip real quick. We've got our load up here and I'm gonna start sticking out, but I'm gonna boom down at the same time. So we tip a little bit. Look at how gently I can set us back down. We didn't slam back down on the ground. But essentially what you're gonna do is load your bucket, get it heaped, we're gonna boom up, give us some room to work with, and then as we stick out, we're booming down, and then at the very last second, throw your bucket. And that's what's gonna keep you stable. So another concept you need to think about, because you know there's always another concept, is the fact that when we add inertia into our, our load here, uh, that's going to change the weight as well. If you think about if I'm just holding a load here, that's going to weigh a certain amount. But if I start spinning super fast, well, guess what? It's it's the same concept as, as when you were holding on to each other in grade school and spinning in a circle. Centrifugal force is going to actually make this load heavier. It's going to make it pull away from the machine. And so you may have been totally stable sitting still, but the second you start swinging with any sort of speed, you're going to start to get tippy. And by the way, you're going to get far tippier when you're over the side of your machine as opposed to in line with the machine. So there's multiple things to think about here. So you've already got a load that's swinging and it's 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 getting heavier because we're swinging and now you're over the side of the machine. Next thing you know, you're standing on your well, you're standing on your nose and you're probably crapping your pants. The way to avoid that is again bring that load into you. If we're gonna swing fast, let's bring that load into us just a little bit. You don't have to, don't waste time. We still need to be productive. It makes no sense to tuck your arm all the way in to swing around. You only need enough that it's not gonna make you super tippy. And then once you get out over the side, this is where we're gonna apply that concept we just learned about. If we need to reach way out there, boom down at the same time, and then let your bucket out. If we need to do anything over the side of the machine, you need to be aware of the fact that Ultimately, look at how long our track base is this way. Look at how short it is going side to side. You don't have nearly the track base that you did. And that's why anytime you're operating over the side of the machine, you're more, more prone to tipping. And that's always something you need to keep in mind as well. So as always, I hope this has been helpful. Hopefully my top down view actually caught uh, most of the action there. It's difficult to know exactly when I'm in frame. But that being said, I hope this helps some of you new guys uh, and girls getting into the machines to kind of understand some of the dynamics that are at play and then understand how you can overcome some of those tippy situations with a little bit of technique. So feel free to reach out in the comments, ask your questions. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next Down and Dirty.